I'm going to go ahead and get started. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call the um, November 19, 2024, Longmont Housing Authority Board of Commissions to order. Um, can we um, go ahead and start with roll call? Uh, again, um, I guess chair, vice chair, substitute chair, <laughs> Hidalgo Ferry. Um, well, I'm go this way. Chair Yarbrough. I mean, not chair, I'm the chair, what am I? Commissioner? Commissioner, yeah. Commissioner Yarborough. Uh, Interim Executive Director, Harold Dominguez. Um, Commissioner McCoy. Commissioner Rodriguez. Tim Hall, Assistant Chair. Commissioner Martin. Okay. Tim Hall, Assistant City Director. Sarah, Public Safety. Martin Sully, Assistant Director, LJ. Eric Myers, Assistant Tracy Defense Central Housing Compliance Manager. And then uh, visitor. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll go ahead and start with the agenda revisions and submission of documents. We don't have it. We, we don't have it. Um, and then um, review and the approval. So I need the um, motion to move the October 15th, 2024 minutes. I move the October 15th, 2024 minutes is presented. Second. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Council Member Rodriguez seconds. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and have a vote. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so, um, so the vote is five to zero with Council Member or um, Commissioner um, Chris and um, Chair Peck. Out, mm -hmm. and then we'll go ahead and move on to public uh -huh. invited to be heard. Um, we have a three-minute time limit per speaker. If you'd like to, okay. And then let's go ahead and move on to item five: old and new business. A resolution um, LHA 2024-24 to approve the 2025 utility allowance schedule. Is there a presentation or so, so it's just um, it's just every year we have to do a survey to see if the utilities needed to, the allowance that we give to HCB clients. Okay. Um, and so we normally go ahead and um, do it with Boulder Housing mm -hmm. Partners and Boulder House no Boulder House Boulder County Housing Authority. And so it's just this year's changes, and it's not a big change. Okay. I move resolution um, 2024-24. Second. And then is there any discussion on this before we vote? Okay. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say aye. Okay, so that passes five to zero with um, Commissioner Chris and Chair Peck out. Um, then we have item B, the LHA accessibility project. Is that yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll take this one. Okay. So I know it felt me fill in the numbers. So we've talked a little bit about um, with you all as commissioners and as the city council regarding ARPA funds. Um, we, as we approach the end of 2024, uh, we have to have all ARPA funds contracted. And then we have until 2026 to expend those funds. And so as we're nearing the end from an ARCA side, one of the things that we're, we're finding is that we have projects that came in under budget. Uh, we have positions that we funded. Uh, and so what we don't want to do is lose any of the money. So as part of the accessibility project, um, this is... Uh, uh, amendments to the intergovernmental agreement that allows us to use CBG CD funds and ARPA funds for the accessibility work that we have um, on uh, housing authority properties. I think you're going to see three of them. So I may just mm -hmm. talk about um, all of these, or I'll talk about generally this is going to fall for most of these in terms of what we're looking at. So in terms of the accessibility projects, what we're doing is we're contracting, the city, and you'll have two actions, one on the city side and one on the housing authority. 
we're contracting for these funds. Once we contract between the city and the housing authority, the reason that we're picking these projects is because it's a housing authority, it meets the intent and the utilization of these funds. Very, it's a very clear meet versus a questionable one, which prevents the potential for it to be thought back. Once we're contracting, anything that we start having in excess in 25 and 26, we then have the ability to what we call sweep those funds where they're not being spent into these accounts so that you can finish this work. So the first one that you're voting on, 2024-25 and 2024-26, is regarding the accessibility work, and so that's going to be concrete work and things like that. And just one clarification for the CDBG one, the city council won't see that one. Um, it's just a difference in what goes to the boards because of that charter amendment. It's only the CDBG one is only $6,000, not the board that council drafted. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. That's all for 25 and 26. Okay, so then do you want us to do these individually? Or yeah, so let's take these. Um, one at a time. We'll go 25, 26, and then I'll talk a little bit about the security process. Okay. Okay. So um, do I have a motion to approve L uh, resolution LHA 2024-25? So moved. Seconded. Any discussion or questions? Okay. So all those in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. So um, the resolution passes five to zero with Commissioner Chris and Chair Peck out. And resolution 20, uh, LHA 2024 26. Resolution. I move uh, LHA 2024 26. Second. Second. So, um, so it was moved by uh, Commissioner McCoy, and I realize I forgot to do that. Seconded by Commissioner Rodriguez. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that passes unanimously with um, five to zero with Commissioners um, Chris and Chair Peck out. And then we have now the uh, LAJ security cameras project. So in this you see ARPA and ARPA interest and so everything I talked about in terms of moving the ARPA funds over applies to this. Um, with the nuance that when we look at ARPA funds, we have the actual dollars that were allocated to us from ARPA. We also have had the ability to earn interest on ARPA funds, which has different requirements in terms of what you have to do, so it's less restrictive. So when we talk about the security cameras in this case, we're doing the same thing in terms of what are eligible projects that we can spend the funds on without having to return the ARPA funds back to the federal government. All of that's in play. There's two components to this. One is we're utilizing ARPA funds to pay for the actual cameras that meet the bidding requirements associated with uh, the ARPA rules. We're using interest that we earned on the ARPA dollars to pay for the installation of the cameras because the installation didn't meet the federal procurement guidelines. We allocated ARPA funds for cameras and, and other things as we were moving forward. We always knew we didn't have enough money to do uh, the suites because of the cost and the number of cameras we had. As we moved into this period where we had to, to start looking at creating opportunities to sweep, we had we realized we had enough money to put cameras at the suites, which is actually one of the most important properties in terms of having camera access. And so these two items are utilizing our funds to finish the camera project at the suites. Happy to answer any questions. So um, let's go ahead and um, oh, go ahead. I have a question. So I think it was, I think it was this one, 24, 27, when I was talking about the um, security cameras. Then it, it, it was also talking about the position of the accountant in there. I didn't understand why I had that in there. So the, those are two different. So there's the ARPA funding 
source between the city and the LHA. Mm -hmm. What you're thinking of is the Intergovernmental Agreement for Support and Services. That's the master agreement between LHA and the city for all of our positions. And so adding in the security cameras as um, by licenses to the city's contract is part of that, that amendment. Um, but we are also doing the counter as part of that. But we haven't got that one yet. Okay. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so um, can I have a motion to move resolution LAJ 2024-27? So moved. So moved. Okay, and then second. Okay. So the um, resolution was moved by Commissioner Martin and seconded by um, Commissioner Yarborough. Any, um, any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, so that passes five to zero with Commissioner Chris and uh, Chair Peck out. And um, next on the list is resolution LHA 2024-2024. 28 to approve the second amendment to the intergovernmental agreement between the city of, uh, and the Longmont Housing Authority for 2024. Um, is there anything that we need to add to that? Yes. Okay. Um, so, can I have a motion? I move uh, uh, resolution uh, LHA 2024 28. Second. Okay. So, that was moved by Commissioner Pack, seconded by Commissioner Yarborough. Any discussion? Commissioner McCoy. Commissioner McCoy. Yeah, Commissioner, what did I say? Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, just a, a correction on the, on, the? on the agenda, the, mm -hmm. the there. Yeah. I thought that was number four. Yeah. So, P-E-H, It's just on the agenda, but it's not on the resolution. So, it was just a typo. So the uh, motion was uh, moved by Commissioner McCoy and seconded by Commissioner Yarborough. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, so that passes five to zero with Commissioners Chris and uh, Chair Peck out. Absent. Then we move on to the next item. And this one is for resolution LHA 2024-30 to approve an IGA for ARPA funds for LHA, LHA tenant readiness services. And is that the one that you were referring to? So this is a so this is um so looking back and forth now. No, that's coming. So 2024-30, IDA for ARPA funds for tenant readiness services. Mm -hmm. If you all uh, remember in the last Board of Commissioners meeting, we talked about the number of units that we have vacant in terms of getting those units turned mm -hmm. so we can get folks housed. Um, a, primarily house people that need housing. Mm -hmm. B, it helps the financial position of the organization. When we talked about the staffing, turnover that we had within our maintenance department and just some of the challenges we had based on the condition of the units and getting those turned. At that time, I mentioned that we may have some market funds that we need to start shifting over. Mm -hmm. Everything that I talked about in terms of remaining funds from ARPA and interest is applied here. One of the things I forgot to mention before, it's all the same funding. When we talked about the positions that we had um, allocated on the ARPA side, one of the challenges with that is we're at the point now where when we created those positions, they had five year terms. Now we're inside of the horizon of two year terms, and so it's getting harder and harder for us to, um, excuse me, find people that are willing to take term positions for less than two years. So one of the things that we did is we did an exchange and that's primarily this eighty thousand dollars this eighty thousand is a big chunk of it is so we money where we had budgeted for positions we took interest dollars and put that into the positions we freed up the ARPA dollars that has all the requirements on it and then we put it again to this project which will allow us to contract for unit turns so that we can turn those units faster and get them occupied. That essentially allows us to then re-baseline where we are in unit turns and then create 
a, a more defined process in terms of time requirements for the maintenance staff to turn in units. And, and so this is really to, when you look at the occupancy numbers and the vacant units, this is allowed us to contract and get this turn pretty fast. It also clearly meets the requirements of the ARPA fund. And so there's no question of uh, clawback as it relates to the previous dollars. Yes, I had, um, before, I just wanted the record to reflect that Commissioner Chris has entered, so if you want to announce you here. Commissioner <laughs> Diane Chris. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I have a question about this. So what are we going to do? I know this is, I understand about the ARPA funds and using that money and the interest and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we are, uh, so we are contracting to get these make rates, you know, having done. But what are are we doing to be uh, sustainable? Like, are we going to constantly contract because that's become very, very expensive in the long run? So, how long is the contract for? The two years? No, it's just to get these units. Done. Just for these. Correct. And so, is there a system that we're doing to make sure that? Uh, what are we planning to make sure that you know? Um, are we working with workforce, Boulder County? I don't know. I'm just asking these questions because I know it's, it can be very expensive. And I just, and I know we got the ARPA funds mm -hmm. to uh, take care of this, but what are we doing? Um, what system are we putting in place to make sure that we can try our best? I know it's hard, but try our best to uh, make sure we have maintenance ready to go and train so that we can get these turnovers, these make ready. Uh, done in, at, a, at a good time. So a couple of things. Uh, when you all approved the budget, mm -hmm. part of the budget approval was um, creating a, a maintenance position for Village of Maine, mm -hmm. which then let us take the maintenance supervisor who also did the work at Village of Maine um, to free some of their time up to where A, they can work with their maintenance staff across the properties and prioritize and time these issues. That position then can take some of the um, have-tos that blow up on a regular basis so that then uh, the maintenance staff can focus on the unit turns or they could do this and he could assist with the unit turns. So part of that is what you all approved in the budget in terms of creating capacity. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we've talked about doing is um, Historically, the process has been that the maintenance staff clean the units. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good use of time in terms of what they're doing. So part of that then is looking at potentially having custodial services, contracting that piece out to come in and clean the units. Once the unit's cleaned, then they can see what really needs to be done, and then they clean up after themselves. Um, and then there's another piece of this where we're going to have to really look at an R, do an ROI on this to determine when units hit certain thresholds. Does it make more sense for us to try to do it in-house or does it, in that case, make sense for us to contract that particular unit based on the severity of the, of the condition of the unit? So those are things that Lauren's been really proactive on and we're going to refine that process. But, that's generally the point. Uh, and that was a big piece of having the maintenance position. Yeah, I know we did. And so that's why when I saw yeah. that, when I read that about the contract, and I was like, I do agree with contracting um, someone to do the cleaning mm -hmm. and let maintenance come in and do the work. Um, do we also have like uh, inspections as well? How often do we have inspections? So historically, uh, our plan is always to do biannual inspections. They were not being done at every property. So part of uh, the issue is that on top of doing straight unit turns and just managing the property maintenance, um, there are a lot of capital improvements that have not been tracked. So we're at this time doing ad hoc purchasing of one washer dryer unit, this dishwasher, this ceiling fan, when really the time has not been taken to make a plan for all the things that need to be purchased ahead of time and budgeting it out for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we'll be working closely with Kendra 
the maintenance supervisor now that they're going to be freed up and have a lot more admin time and also um, whomever we uh, hire for our regional to start doing that asset management and, and capital expenditure forecasting. Um, in addition to the unit terms, we've just had a situation of staffing issues that have created like a backlog. And, um, you know, some of that is just due to skill set, some of it was just due to timing. We have hired two people to fill those two positions, so I made quick work of that money. Um, one has already started last week, and I just made an offer this week, and they've accepted. So, um, one of the challenges we've had with hiring for maintenance positions is there's a pretty small pool of um, qualified maintenance technicians that have experience in multifamily. What we saw in the recruitment process was a lot of um, construction um, and then just people who have not worked in multifamily. They might have had a handyman business on the side, but they have not worked at the volume of a multifamily property. And so the two people that we've hired, one does have the maintenance. You could literally drop them into a unit and he would go. Um, and the other person's a background in construction that has a lot of skills. Um, we're seeing that already. Um, so part of this contracting is going to take a little bit of pressure off getting those units turned, getting them filled, avoiding any 8823 issues at the end of the year. And it's also going to give our maintenance staff a little breathing room to train because I think one of the things that was missing was a um, standard quality and an expectation of what the unit turns look like. Um, there was no checklist, there was no expectations. It was kind of like every property did it different. Every property maintenance technician had a different level that they were working at. Mm -hmm. And there was no uniform um, like process. Uh, now that since I came on, maintenance was no longer managed underneath the property, the regional property manager. Mm -hmm. And um, given what's gone on over the past couple months, uh, I fully expect Patrick, our uh, maintenance supervisor, to be a lot more involved in setting those standards, policies and procedures and helping us refine that time. My goal is that this is a one-time need mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that we get out of this situation and we have a, a better skill set because of it and then we don't need to do this again. That would be my goal. That's but, what I wanted yeah, to make sure. This, this it should not just, yeah. be an ongoing thing unless we're able to contract a small amount of money for emergency situations. We've had a couple where properties, we've had like four or five deaths and bouts within a month. Um, that typically happens around this time of year too. We will start making decisions to move back with family, move on, or they pass away. Um, so that's kind of what we're seeing now too. In addition to the backlog of work from staffing issues, we just had a bunch of vacancies come up in the last couple of weeks. We've had four deaths in the last two weeks. So um, yeah. So what will help Lauren is this is a one-time pressure relief. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen again unless we get into a situation that she described. Mm -hmm. But it has to be at least that of greater. Okay. And um, it then ties in operationally to, so when we look at timing and unit turns and things like that, that's also tying into some of the yardy work that we're doing to get maintenance on yardy so that we can actually have better dashboards so that we're not having to ask questions about where they are in a certain process. The system will be letting us know where they are in the process. And we're setting the bar higher. I will say that I think that, um, and I know you're not at the point where you can do this, but I think inspections need to happen more often. Oh yeah. Very much so. Because then you will be able to see where what you need beforehand. Or you can start seeing what's happening in these properties, in the units, before it gets to the point to where you have to cut out everything or, you know, a lot of times people just hush hush on certain yeah. situations and it's slowly but surely getting worse because they don't want you to come in the unit, they don't want you to know what's going on and things like that. So I do think that, um, I don't know if you all already talked about it, but inspections need to happen more often, for sure. We're out of the time frame where we can't blame COVID anymore. Yeah. Are you thinking important is that what you do? I will have them every month or every other month. Seriously, I would because just getting people um, creating your standards and then just seeing once the properties are running smoothly, mm -hmm. then you can decrease the time how often you have the inspections. 
but you're not you don't have the capacity to do that and so um so i don't know maybe quarterly would be better we but have to balance the need to do that with also respecting that these are people's homes yeah and the tenants already get bombarded every year with inspections whether it's our inspections the lender or investor come in chapter comes in and does inspections um, third-party compliance will come to sometimes come in with inspections dola does inspections from the state um, especially around the time of uh, new development um, everyone wants to come look at the property and, and so we have to balance that need i try to make sure when we're having that situation that when someone comes to do an inspection we're not hitting the same units because they pick them at random and i will tell them give me your list that you want to see right. and five alternates because if somebody just got inspected last month they don't want another stranger tracing yes. through their house to keep yeah. those. and i understand that but i get that and i understand that and i appreciate the fact that you're making sure to try to make sure that the same unit isn't being inspected mm -hmm. several times but i mean if this is a requirement then you need to make sure that your units are looking good and yes i mean that's just what it is it's part of hud and yeah. um that's me personally. I think that that will eliminate and prevent a lot of issues with these units mm -hmm. um, down the road. If they know, you never know when somebody's coming in. Not saying it, it, it may be a random when you all come into the into the units. Mm -hmm. um, say we're going to inspect every month. It may not be your unit. It may be your unit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Keep your stuff right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. I don't know. That's just me. I'm, we, we are also working very closely with um, Christina Pacheco and her team with mm -hmm. the conditions of the suites. Um, there's a lot of services that are available to seniors who are experiencing issues like hoarding mm -hmm. um, or just clutter. Mm -hmm. And so there aren't many supports for people who don't meet the age requirement for the senior mm -hmm. services. So they're actually working on a a program that would not be tied to housing management but we would work alongside them if they get a referral for someone who maybe isn't taking care of their unit um, that if they if they agree to do some clinical services or visits they would get the benefit of someone coming in from their unit and then we would just kind of track that and do more inspections to make sure we're not having rodent issues we're not having a, a fire safety hazard by having too much stuff in the unit so we are looking at some of the ways we can address that, getting creative, mm -hmm. um, which is a big one, like having too much stuff in your unit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. big problem. Yes. Can our folks stay along? Like, you know, uh, if some group, you talked about all these groups coming in. We do. Can, can we have our guys tag yeah. along with them so that, I mean, I didn't know if it might have been, maybe they want to see it themselves without somebody like it. Well, I'm staff watching, but I mean, the thing is that if you're already in there and you can be easy there. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right, right. Yep, anytime anyone comes to do an inspection, whether it's lender, investor, CHAPA, or the state, our staff is accompanying them. Um, one, because we have to let them in. And two, we're taking note of anything, any deficiencies or corrections that need to be made. Um, a lot of times we're trying to do that before they even come in, so there are no deficiencies or corrections. Mm -hmm. We've had pretty good luck, especially like the suites. We've had a lot of inspections over there. Um, and then just also keep in mind whenever someone puts in a maintenance request, mm -hmm. every time maintenance goes in, they're they're supposed to, and they do, mm -hmm. start looking for problems that might need to be fixed, and that sometimes generates additional work orders. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely necessary. Part of the next stage to the point is we can look at how we approach what you're talking about. Part of it is also how do you structure um, routine maintenance coming through. So um, I was thinking about it, my, so my kids just moved into the apartment. So every other month they change their air filter. So you might not necessarily need the inspection as we're describing it because you're doing that work. Then off those months, there's something else. And so when you look at how that, 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 yeah. that, when I look at, I mean, because I was telling my kids this, I'm like, so A, they're doing it for a reason. They're also doing it to watch what's happening in your unit. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that's part of what Patrick, and if we can line that schedule out, okay. we'll have a better sense of what that looks like. 
It's not a question. Is this the arc, the undesignated ARPA homes on the interest that you're talking about? Um, these are, some of this is designated ARPA funds that were for positions, mm -hmm. but we replaced the position funds with interest because of the timing issue that we're having because we have, those positions were five-year positions, we're down to two years. So we're having trouble filling the positions. And so on that side, what I said to them is, by Ju June of next year, if we haven't filled the position, then we just need to take that position off the books because it's even gonna be less likely to fill it. And then we can sweep those funds over. Um, because they are one-time funds, so we have to use them for one-time expenses. Well, I have, um, I have to get out my tambourine because yeah, I'm going to so. beat it again. Um, back, back in 2020, uh, 200000 was originally earmarked for small business. Mm -hmm. And um, that got renegotiated. Um, because it was difficult to administrate it under our bank. But now if we have undesignated funds and also if we have interest that is not attached to our restrictions, I would like to see that go back to small business. And I just want to say that some some of these small businesses and the mayor pro tem she gets that concerns as well. Some of these businesses are they're just one step away from <coughs> some of this housing and uh, just a big fan of Amanda Fish you fed for a day and Jim Fish you fed for a lifetime just a Stephen Covey book just most of you probably know about it just in case you know he's a business writer um, and I think there are ways that we can administrate it uh, for in in instance the Latino Chamber of Commerce has been uh, using funds to help small businesses, particularly those uh, multicultural mm -hmm. uh, who maybe are not uh, English speakers as a first language, to do websites mm -hmm. so that they can get their businesses out there. And um, so I did, I did look at that. I was trying to figure this out. Uh, so could we, because we don't have much time. Yeah, but I, that, that is a valuable conversation. Yeah. But I'm wondering if this is the, the the avenue. You know, maybe we add it to an agenda item at City Council. I feel like we have more authority and capacity to further discuss this at the City Council meeting rather than here. we can, okay. we can. But so, I, but I also I, don't want to commit the funds, especially yeah. from interest that is, un, you know, unencumbered, okay. okay. without discussing. So the funds went to the positions. The interest went to the positions, and we moved. And these are all very valuable. And, and we moved the ARPA funds out of the positions because we knew that was a an allowable expense in there. So it wasn't that it was necessarily freed up. We just exchanged funding sources, so we didn't have the ARPA restriction on. on the, on the positions. Yeah, but we've been kind of massaging this all the way through, and somehow that 200,000, and I looked it up with this 20 02 was the amendment that was made after that. It was originally your for 200,000 for small business assistance. Yeah, and that, the reason that became an issue with the direct ARPA allocation was because of duplication of benefits. Uh, so, for example, if you got the, what was the loan? I mean, what was our total award? Um, 12 million? 12 million, and, and so this Sorry. allocation was, just that was when we presented and talked to council, the council's decision on that. So, mm -hmm. in this case, it would have to be a council conversation yeah. that we would separate it apart from this, because this is merely Housing. Exchange. Well, no, yeah. this is just exchanging funding sources so that we still have the money for the positions, but the money with the time requirement or the requirements on it goes into what is clearly an allowable expense. Mm -hmm. Now, 
the interest funds aren't totally unrestricted. And that's the other side of this, is that you still have general requirements that you have to adhere to, even with the interest funds. And Peter, once we get through, once we get to June of next year, we'll have a sense of where those positions are, and then we'll have a sense of where the money is, and we can come back and have that conversation on the council side. Like we have to June for some of these small businesses. I know you all get some of the emails that I do. So then, we can bring it back to council. We'll have to unfund those positions that are funded. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I feel like this is like this conversation is more like we take off our Longmont Housing Authority hat, put on our city council hat, and yeah. then we're, that's what we're advocating for community at large. I think for this purpose, we are looking through the lens of the housing authority and what's in the best interest of building our capacity at the housing authority. So that's kind of like, you know, we're going to be discussing this again. We're having it on our consent agenda, um, agenda tonight. But I'm saying the two are married. Because if we don't help people avoid, you know, homelessness, yeah. then we're just making it more aggressive for the housing authority. I mean, there's just more that we have to deal with and more that you're short on housing. Um, do I have a motion? I move for uh, uh, LH8 2024-30. Do I have a second? Second. So, um... The motion uh, was moved by uh, Commissioner McCoy, seconded by Commissioner Yarborough um, to move resolution LHJ 2024-30. Is there any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, trying to get us to there, but um, okay. So uh, let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Okay. So the motion carries uh, five to one with Chair Peck um, absent. Let's go ahead and move on to item E, resolution LHA 2024-31, approve IGA for ARPA funds for the Zinnia Tenant Damages Fund. So this was part of the original allocation, or this is connected to the original allocation um, on Zinnia. So in order to build that permanent supportive housing uh, complex, um, this happened in Bluebird and this happened here is there, we had to create a fund for tenant damages. Mm -hmm. And so typically you would see that in the form of deposits. Uh, but because this is operation, operating as a whole, uh, originally it was designed where it would, it would supplant the deposits for individuals. Mm -hmm. This is just creating uh, a general fund that you could use for the damages because the reality is you didn't want everyone coming in to have a deposit because it could overly inflate based on the um, impact of the units in return. And so this is basically $50,000 that when somebody moves out, if there's excessive damages, you can utilize it to um, make the necessary repairs so the next tenant can move in. And it was not to exceed, what, $1,500 per unit? Correct. I thought this was very smart, um, me personally. Very smart. Okay, so, uh, so I moved um, resolution 2024-31. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion on the topic? Well, once again, I think this is something that, I mean, it's important, mm -hmm. but it's not the need. I mean, it's something that could, could be funded as we go. No, this has to be funded. Mm -hmm. This is part of the agreement to build Zenia, mm -hmm. is that we had to have that funded for the owner. But, uh, individuals or parties that normally fund this were not able to fund it to this extent. That's what I understood. So in permanent supportive housing, the majority of folks you hire, you, you, well, the requirement on this is 30% AMI and below. And so many of these individuals that are moving into this facility actually come from homelessness. So there's no way that they can fund the deposit. Mm -hmm. Right, right, I understand that. But I understand there's usually um, supporters who do fund for individuals, but because we're 55 all at once, they weren't able to come in and fill them out. Is that correct? That's, yes, that's part of it. Um, one of the other challenges that we're seeing in this, in the nonprofit world, um, 
that we're seeing is a lot of those people that used to be able to do that aren't able to do that now because yeah. their funding has been cut from various agencies. And so one of the one of the significant it's issues. the same problem in you know the not for profit as it is for the for profit. Everybody's been affected. Sure. <laughs> I'm just saying, let's try to stop it at the beginning when it comes to the business owner. And, you know, the better they can do, then the more likely we are to slowly turn that ship around and have more tax dollars in the process. Yeah. It's up to you all in terms yeah. of how you want to proceed. Think, yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying, but this, these are our properties. I mean, we are affiliated with these properties. So we want to make sure that yes. the tenants are set up in the property the units are yeah. taken care of. Um, we know that these, the tenants are not able to pay these deposits. As we do, as I did, when I rented, I had a deposit, if my unit is damaged, and if I didn't have a deposit, then that landlord would lose out, yeah. you know, yeah. if it was damaged. So this right here is giving us the opportunity to be able to cover those yes. expenses if, when those people move out, yes. because they can't afford to put a deposit in. But it's our deposits on our properties on damage that hasn't happened yet. So you can see that there's a time factor as well. And these are all important topics, and it's really Sophie's choices. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just saying, rather than take it at the end, let's try to forestall it at the beginning. And you think of some of these businesses that you know over there. No. Yeah. Okay. So, um, can I, if you moved it, correct? Okay, so let's go ahead and vote. Um, we're running out of time. Move, move so, um, you second. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Yarborough moved um, no, I just want to the conversation. <laughs> seconded by Commissioner McCoy. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay, so that passes five to one with Chair uh, Peck out, absent today. And let's go ahead and move on to resolution LHA 2024-32, administrative agreement with LHA Aspen Meadows Neighborhood, LLC. Sam, can you help me with that one? Who has that one? Oh, so oh. Kendra's actually the one that got one this one, but I can, I can, I can place the board right there. No, we can't hear you. That's a lot. There you go. It's very, very soft. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so the, the next one are administrative reports that are tax advisor tools that would be beneficial for us to do. Um, these are entities who are partners at Google Properties, so Aspen Meadows Neighborhood, Fall River, and um, so these GPs are taxable corporate entities, and they don't technically usually get revenue, but they're working their way down the water pole and will eventually get partnership fees. Since LHA is actually doing the administrative work off money for these GPs because they don't have employees, uh, what they suggest to do is administrative agreements that if they do receive revenue, and that revenue is then transferred to LHJ because they actually do the work for them. So um, the only time this will happen is if they actually get revenue in, and it's um, the way the administrative agreement is written is that they would pay us after all of their expenses are. So most of these um, entities have cash returns that have to be done on a yearly basis. That's usually their main expenditure. So any money received after their tax return, they will issue a check over to LHA. And so that's what all three of these are kind of doing, is that administrative agreement. Any questions? Any questions? Um, I would move resolution 2024-32-33-34. Are we doing this all together okay. one at a time? Okay. Second. Okay. So the motion was to pass uh, resolutions LHA 2024-32, 2024-33, and 2024-34, seconded by, uh, moved by uh, Commissioner Chris, seconded by 
Commissioner uh, McCoy. Uh, any discussion questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Aye. Okay. Um, so the motion carries six to zero with Chair Peck's absent today. Okay, and now we're at the interim executive director report. Uh, development update. Give me development updates. I think it's the same as. Um, we have upcoming grand reopening for Village on Main, which should be calendared. We have the groundbreaking this week for Ascent on Hobart. Oh, yeah. And then there will be a grand, grand opening for City and coming up soon as well. So I'll say that's. I'll say that. Moving on to operations update. Um, you'll see we have, um, as you know, a lot of vacancies. Um, I just want to note the ones at Fall River Spring Creek, they, it seems a lot higher at 605. Um, that's sort of an outlier because we are moving our waitlist process into Yardy so that it's managed in Yardy in that system and no longer uh, managed in a notebook and a spreadsheet. Um, so there was a lag time with getting that waitlist uploaded into Yardi. So that's why we had a couple deaths, a couple move outs. Um, but the team, uh, Nikki and John, were amazing. They were the first property to get their entire waitlist switching properties in Yardi. Mm -hmm. So they're now starting to call people and lease up. So um, those numbers should go down significantly next year. Um, the other high one is the suites. Uh, we know the suites has a higher turnover rate, a lot more damage given the permanent supportive nature. Um, one unit is um, a down unit due to meth remediation, which has been cleared and remediated and now just need to rebuild. And then we have um, five units that just need turns. Um, the team and I met this morning to prioritize those units, and over the next two and a half weeks, we move the week and then kind of for the holiday, mm -hmm. um, they're going to be prioritizing those unit turns because we need to get those. Um, voucher units filled. Um, DOH is going to start asking questions after a while. Um, and so we've had a lot of challenges with unit turns there. Just because the damage is just extensive, even if it's not meth. Um, we've got holes in floors, we've got closet doors ripped off, cabinets all torn apart. Um, and we're also going to have to replace some furniture at some of these units as well. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we're working through wait lists, trying to get them in the yard at the other properties. Mm -hmm. um, Village on Main, last I checked when I did this report on the 8th, we only had two vacants left, which okay. is awesome because last month I think we had like 15. Um, so those have all been rented out. We've got new people. We just had our company conversations on Monday there, and mm -hmm. half of the people that were there were all new tenants, which was really exciting. Um, and then, of course, we have the new uh, unit vacancy rate, the uh, vacancy loss, which um, Kendra's going to have to work with me on pulling a better, a better number because it pulls in Zinnia, and that, that number's not actually true. We don't want to include Zinnia because that's technically not our own property. Mm -hmm. But um, you can just see that our aim next year will be to have this at 200,000 or less to stay in line with the unit turn and, and the vacancy ratios that we should have. Um, we're operating in real estate. Finance, financial reporter, I know Yeah, so basically, in third quarter, we'll see the biggest issue is the vacancy. Um, we're almost over budget in quite a few of our properties on that one. If we're already over budget in third quarter, we're probably going to the budget by fourth quarter. Um, so that is the biggest issue. I've also highlighted some items in yellow. Those are anything that's kind of over 75%. We're kind of getting a little close, um, but it's very possible expenditures have stopped in that too, but it's just more of a flag. Um, any maintenance overages are usually due to um, Insurance repairs that kind of went between 2023 and 2024. So in 2023, we got the revenue for those, but in 2024, we had the expenses. Um, so if you'll see there's a higher and we don't know the budget for those because you, you don't know. We didn't know at the time at the end of the 2023 what the cost of repair was going to be. Um, 
And then we do have a timing and a timing issue on LHJ. We do as best as we can to budget for what developer fees are actually coming in. Um, but sometimes based on where the construction ends and how things work out and capital contributions, they may not come in the same year that we budget them for. But we do have uh, general things covered with this until they do come in. But you'll see that on the agenda. We have more expenditure right now than that's due to the developer fees that we're waiting for on a couple properties to come in, which is BOM's um, ascent um, are just a couple of them. And then AR is pretty standard. Now that we've got a flow of moving things to collections, we have not collected anything that we've sent over, which is probably close to $600,000, $650,000. Um, they were able to find one person and wanted to proceed with court, but we haven't made that decision to if, if that's the direction we want to go mm -hmm. on that one. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, uh, yes. Commissioner Martin. Um, do we have any way of finding out before proceeding with court whether the person that owes the money has any assets? I don't, that I don't know. Um, part, of, part of the loop on them is that we have to start reviewing what we've sent to collections in more detail because some of the things that were on their ledgers may not have actually. We can't find that the documentation for it, and that's what this that's this particular one. And it was the, the person that they found it was less than fifteen hundred dollars that went to election. It wasn't a really good one, um, but we are monitoring it more closely now to make sure that what's on the ledger has more to do. Thank you. Yeah. So this kind of all starts cycling back into the unit terms and the issues. Are, so when Lauren mentioned in 8823, if you don't have the unit terms taken care of, then the units have to be habitable under the tax credit um, by December, December 31st. If they're not habitable, then what happens is the investors then come back and they actually charge us um, for the tax credit, you know, they, like, use it. Or, yeah. they, they use their tax credits on the unit for the whole year. Yeah. So you can have a unit rented the entire year. Someone moves out, damaged it so bad, you can't move someone back in. It's still in that same condition on December thirty first. They lose the whole year. Oh, okay. So it ties to what Kendra's talking about because most of the individuals that you house. Especially 30% AMI below, don't have a lot of assets, and and that's part of why you never see them through the collection process mm -hmm. show up, just because they're just not moving in that world. You can get a judgment, but you still have to collect it. Correct. Mm -hmm. and that's hard to do. That's if there yeah. are assets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm guessing too. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's exactly it. We could get the judgment, but then yeah, so what? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then we have um, a unit tested at Fall River. It's, mm -hmm. been, it's vacated by problem tenant. It was a, a mutual rescission. Mm -hmm. And so um, that test came back actually um, just needs to be cleaned, no demo. So that's very good news. Mm -hmm. Real quick, and that company we're using uses that product um, as a clean first company. So they um, they're doing they did our bathrooms and we're finding um, mm -hmm. huge success with, with that chemical. And thank you for the <coughs> blessings and I'll move forward with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, the cameras at the suites are important. Just as a side note, because a lot of the issues, this is really directly to public safety, because a lot of the issues extend from Hover to Sunset, a long Spring Gulch, and, and that just is helping us manage the call volume, mm -hmm. uh, because it's much easier for us to, to work with public safety with cameras versus have those repeated calls coming out. And we can check them, you know, call comes in, we can check them right now. That's how, that's how they're working in the park. Mm -hmm. So it's very beneficial to us. Yeah. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next, uh, Commissioner Commons. Anyone have any comments? <coughs> so, okay. Uh, so um, next, uh, adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Oh, and yeah, um, so moved <laughs> by um, Commissioner McCoy, seconded by Commissioner um, Martin. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Aye.